Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist and on this latest installment of my crazy case files we'll be talking about a few interesting different cultural beauty norms from all over the world that involve the oral cavity. But first, we gotta get into the disclaimer, and that is that all of the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that might employ me or that I might belong to, and that also this video is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, I recommend seeing your nearest healthcare provider. And with that being said, Let's get into today's video. So there are a few different beauty norms that I will talk about in this video. The first is a case supplied to me by Dr. Barrett Andreessen, who is an oral and maxillofacial radiologist. And you can check out his website at radiodontics.com for more educational activities and resources and also to submit any cases that you may have. But Dr. Andreessen supplied me with a case that is on my oral pathology slash radiology bucket list, and that is Sasuk. Sasuk is a traditional practice that usually occurs in women from Southeastern Asian nations like Malaysia and Singapore and Brunei and Indonesia. And it's the practice of the insertion of Sasuk or charm needles into the subcutis of either the skin of the face or intraorally to the submucosal structures of usually the buccal and labial mucosa. Sasuk is a traditional practice performed by a shaman and it is said to bring a variety of different positive things into the person's life, including beauty, wealth, good luck, good fortune, and a whole slew of other positive things. The interesting thing about Sasuk is that many of the nations in which this occurs today are now very strongly religious in a more mainstream religion, such as Islam or Christianity, where some of these more traditional practices aren't necessarily encouraged. So many patients may have Sasuk, but completely deny it because it's considered taboo for the rest of their nation. The case from Dr. Andreessen was actually a middle-aged Korean woman who completely denied that she had anything done in her face or oral cavity. But those radiographs don't lie. The closest I've gotten to Sasuk is in a Brazilian patient who presented to the clinic for a routine examination. And when a panoramic radi radiograph was taken, these slender little metal things appeared. And when questioned further, we discovered that the patient received acupuncture on her face in her home country of Brazil. There is a traditional Japanese form of acupuncture called Hari, where acupuncture needles are actually left behind. And that could be for a multitude of reasons, to promote healing, uh, to allow for more pain relief, um, but it's not the more traditional version of acupuncture where needles are promptly removed. The next case in this exploration of cultural beauty norms is the gingival tattoo. Some subcultures in Eastern African nations such as Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia actually go so far as to tattoo their facial gingiva of their maxilla completely black. This, to some subcultures in these nations, is a sign of beauty, although to me it sounds very painful. This case of intentional intraoral tattoo is from a patient of mine from dental school. Now I went to dental school at The Ohio State University, which is in Columbus, Ohio. And at that time, Columbus, Ohio had the second largest Somali refugee population in the United States that is second to Minneapolis, Minnesota. This patient presented to a screening appointment with me after having just moved. And this is what we discovered on her intraoral exam. The patient did fully admit to having this tattoo performed and did say that it was many years prior, which is why this looks more faded into more of a blue gray. And if this sounds strange to you, I'm sure there are some practices in our culture that may sound strange to other people. For instance, the ever growing popular intraoral labial tattoo, which is when people get the inner lip or their inner labial mucosa tattooed. And I've seen very strange and very crass words. I've seen little pictures and they come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. So be ready when you're performing that intraoral exam 
you might just pull back the labial mucosa and get a surprise. Now, this case is from my files and may serve more as a word of caution. There is this perception that the intraoral labial mucosa tattoo will fade over time. And that's definitely true for some people. The lower lip is constantly in motion when we're talking and when we're eating, it's constantly getting bitten. And sometimes we get out this ulcers and canker sores and various other inflammatory events happening in our labial mucosa. And over time, that tattoo ink is removed by our body, but sometimes it is not. This is a case of a young woman who I know personally that received a tattoo of her favorite band when she was 18 years old. Her favorite band was Shine. Now, that patient, one or two years later, had an aphthous ulcer on the lower portion of the E. That inflammation caused the ink in that area to be removed, but the rest of the ink has lasted well into the patient's, or I guess my friend's, late 20s. So now her tattoo that initially said shine, now says S-H-I-N-C, shink, I guess. So I guess that's a word of warning for anyone considering that labial tattoo that sometimes it might just stick with you. Thanks for watching this latest edition in my Crazy Case Files series. Feel free to check out the other videos in my playlist of all of the Crazy Case Files that I've collected so far. To make sure you don't miss any future videos, make sure you subscribe and turn that bell notification on. Give this video a like, and if you think somebody else might like this video as well, be sure to share it with them. Thanks again for watching, and be well.